Saturn has a moon called Titan. And if you happen to be on the Cassini spacecraft, this is what you see. Again, that is an image of Titan in front of Saturn. Um, and Titan is an enigmatic world. Titan has a, a hydrological or a gasological um, <laughs> cycle such that the atmosphere um, takes up the, the um, hydrocarbons and then rains them back down. And in fact, there are lakes and rivers on Titan. To look at Titan's surface, you would think it looked like, well, kind of like Earth. We got to look at Titan's surface when Cassini, shortly after Cassini got to the Saturn system, dropped the Huygens probe into Titan, landed on Titan, and took this picture. And if you go online and look at them, you can start to see dendritic channels that suggest like rivers, mountains, and there are also lakes. Uh, so this is the North Polar Lake region. Those are liquid hydrocarbon lakes, fluid. So when you go up close to one of them, you can see not only is this, here's where the lake is, but you can see this nice little channel, looks like a river channel. Cassini using radar mapped uh, the spots along the way and you can see that some of them hit right on those channels and discovered, this was published last month, that some of these channels are really deep, up to like 1,800 feet deep, deep carved channels with liquid hydrocarbons in the bottom. So they're like canyons with rivers at the bottom of hydrocarbons. We knew there were lakes, we saw the dendritic features, but we didn't know if they had fluid in them, if they really they look like they could have been drainage channels uh, draining into the lakes. But now this observation really shows that there are uh, liquid hydrocarbons flowing through these. There's an honest to goodness, just like Earth, you know, rain, flows, lakes, uh, evaporation, a hydrological. Uh, cycle, which is kind of insane and fabulous. Now, I, we've mentioned several times here about how a, a fluid like a water, liquid water, is important for life. I mentioned a couple of all spaces ago that there was a study that showed that you can find chemical pathways to create life not in liquid water, but in liquid ethane and methane. And I uh, kicked myself after that show, if any of you were there, because I forgot to say one of the key things about um, that study that, that calculated the ways in which the chemistry could give you life. And that is, if you might, if you weren't here, I won't say you might, if you were here, you might remember, um, it's uh, catalyzed by radiation that comes through Titan's atmosphere. What I failed to say that evening is that Titan's atmosphere has a, a window, an opacity or transparency window right at that wavelength that lets the, the correct wavelength of light come in to catalyze the kinds of chemistry that leads to prebiotic environment. So Titan could also be a living world, not based on water, not like life here, but something completely different. There are some high altitude clouds. This was also a mystery. The short version is that they couldn't figure out how clouds, when they condense, uh, have a very, we have a very clear understanding of what the combination, the mix of, you know, liquid to gas to ice ratios need to be when clouds form. I mean, it's kind of straightforward phase chemistry as a call, just, is it, is it liquid, is it gas, is it ice, what is it? And we should, when we see these clouds, be able to measure uh, the, the hydrocarbons uh, in vapor form. They don't. They're not there. Voyager 1 saw the same thing in 1980. And people thought, well, maybe our detectors weren't sensitive enough. Now Cassini is seeing the same thing. So there, that's a mystery. And the thought is that rather than having a normal condensation kind of clouds, these are very high altitude clouds. They're kind of like the high noctilucent clouds in our own atmosphere, that they're, the clouds are made from solid state chemistry. None of this phase transis transitions between vapor and, and ice and liquid. It's all happening solid state. Uh, we see it in our own atmosphere and these kinds of clouds uh, that are very high in the stratosphere on Earth. And so maybe that's going on, on on Titan as well. Yes? Is the liquidity factor any different? Like you said, how do you tell the ice to water to gas? Or is there coming like a different form or different 
You know what I mean? The liquid will have different properties. Of it, you know, we're, we're trying to determine whether it's more fit. Because guess what? Our planetarium show, we're going to Titan. So we're going to have to show these rivers. <laughs> And how are they flowing? We haven't, that scientist is coming next Tuesday <laughs> to sit down with us and tell us what it should look like. Is it slow, thick, viscous stuff? Is it racing along? And, and instead of being water on rock, it's methane on ice. On water ice. On water ice. Yeah, yeah so, water ice makes it, the So there's going to be a different thing. We'll, we'll know yeah. next time. We, we do know that these liquid hydrocarbons can carve channels in the ice, though, because we're seeing these deep canyons. So we're yeah. making those measurements. Yeah. So.